morning. Welcome to this um, tutorial video on momentum and we're going to be looking at 2D collisions. Uh, we've got three aims for the video. Uh, first of all, we want to be able to analyse situations using vector analysis. We want to apply our understanding of the conservation of momentum and then we're going to have a look at a, um, a notable situation where the different objects in collisions have got the same mass. So let's get so the most important thing that you need to remember while we're analysing these new situations, especially as they get more complex, is that momentum is a vector quantity. So that means that all of the vector skills we learnt right at the beginning of the course, so adding vectors together, subtracting vectors, and resolving vectors into their component parts, we need to utilise and apply all of those skills when we're analysing situations in involving momentum. So here is our first situation. We've got two objects, A and B. Uh, B is stationary and A is moving with a velocity in this direction here. So we'll label on our knowns in symbols because we're working in symbols to start with. So we've got M1 is the mass of A, M2 is the mass of B, and A is in, before the collision is moving with velocity V0. After the collision, uh, A moves off in this direction and B moves off in this direction. And these arrows here show you the vectors of the velocity of those two objects. And we can mark on these two angles here and we're going to need to use those in our analysis of the situation. Now, when we're analysing this situation, what we need to remember is that because momentum is a vector, the um, momentum in the y plane here and the momentum in the x plane don't influence each other. And we need to resolve um, and find the total momentum in those two different planes separately. So we want to have a look at the total momentum in the x plane before the collision and we want to look at the total momentum in the y plane before the collision and we know that because of the conservation of momentum that the total momentum in the y plane afterwards will be equal to the total momentum in the y plane before and we know that the total momentum in the x plane afterwards will be equal to the total momentum in the x plane before so our next Thing that we're going to try and do is write some expressions, um, some mathematical expressions, all in symbols, no quantities yet, um, for the y plane and the x plane using the conservation of momentum. And what would be great is if you pause the video and had a go at doing that yourself, and once you had those expressions, then play the video and see if what you came up with matches um, the answer. So here are our expressions for the momentum in the x and y plane before the collision. If we look at the x plane to start with here, because b, b's velocity is zero, uh, that has no momentum. And the velocity of a is equal to m1 multiplied by v0 because momentum is equal to mass times velocity. So this is our expression for the total momentum in the x plane before the collision. Um, and our expression for the total momentum in the y-plane is zero because there's no momentum in the y-plane before the collision. Now, when analysing the situation after the collision, we're going to need to um, be able to resolve these vectors into the x and y components. So if we have a little look at, first of all, the expression for momentum after the collision in the x-plane here, we're saying that the total momentum in the x-plane after the collision is equal to uh, m1, which is the mass of A, multiplied by v1 cos theta1. And that is the x component of this vector. So that's this bit along here the x component of this vector. So we've resolved this vector into x and y components. So v cos theta 1, v1 cos theta 1, sorry, is the component of v1 in the x plane. So that is the x component of a's momentum. 
And then this is the expression for the x component of b's momentum. So m2, the mass of b, multiplied by the x component of v2, so v2 cos theta2, because we're turning this vector through the angle, so it's the cos. So that's our expression for the total momentum in the x plane after the collision. In the y plane, what we're looking at is the same, but we're going to do sine of the same angle. So we've got this expression here for the momentum in the y plane of A, and this expression here for the momentum in the y plane of B. So if we put those expressions together for the before and after, in the x direction, we got the momentum before was m1 times v0. And then after, because of the conservation of momentum, these are going to be equal before and after, but just in the x direction, we've got m1 v1 cos theta1 plus m2 v2 cos theta2. So this is our expression for the momentum before and after the collision in the x plane. And we're going to do the same thing here for the y plane. So the momentum before the collision in the y plane was zero, and that's going to be equal to the momentum of A in the y plane plus the momentum of B in the y plane. Now, if we just have a little, little look at this expression a little bit closer, we can say, well, hang on a minute, this doesn't look as though it's going to come out at zero. It has to come out at zero because of the conservation of momentum. But remember, velocity is a vector as well, and velocity is going to need a positive or negative um, value depending on what you've set up as your values for the system. So in this system, for example, if I was solving this as a real life situation, I might say that up is a positive velocity and down is a negative velocity. And then this V1 and this V2 would be positive and negative in their value, respectively. So as we added these together, we would then come out with zero. So it's all fine. But really, although this might look like a complex situation to start with, all we're doing is remembering that the momentum before equals the momentum after. And we're using our vector analysis, resolving our vectors into our x and y components and knowing that the x plane doesn't affect the y plane, that they're separate, just as we did with projectiles. So now let's look at a couple of other um, notable situations that it's worth always having um, clear in your mind. First of all, if the mass of the two objects, so if we've got a similar situation to we just saw, but we've got M1 here and M2, if M1 and M2 are equal, when these two um, objects go off in their opposite collisions, this angle here, theta, is always going to be 90 degrees. Okay, So whenever you're looking at a situation and the two objects have got identical mass, the angle between them here is always going to be 90 degrees. And if you are... Um, looking for something to do with your time in lockdown, you can have a little go at showing that mathematically. And then finally, if we have a, a look at that situation a little bit further, and we just bear in mind that momentum is conserved, so the momentum before is going to be equal to the momentum after, we can arrange these vectors. So here's the momentum of M1 after the collision and the momentum of M2 after the collision. And here's the momentum before the situation. We can see that the momentum before is equal to the momentum after just by rearranging our vectors. So that is it for the tutorial. Uh, it's now time for some practice questions. Uh, ask any questions that you have on the question document. Um, submit the questions via the Google Classroom and I will um, speak to you soon.